Kirchhoff's voltage law happens to be one of the most important theorems or, or laws which we use to solve any network or electric circuit. Now what is Kirchhoff's voltage law or KVL state? Now it states that the algebraic sum of voltages in any closed part of a network that is traversed in a single direction is zero. So let us take a network. So there is a voltage. Let me call this as V. I have a resistor R1. I have another resistor R2. So Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the algebraic sum of voltages in any closed path of a network that is traversed in a single direction is zero. Now if you know how to write the KVL equation in any given circuit, for any given circuit, half of our problems are solved. So let us see how we can write the KVL for this. Now this is the voltage supply with the terminals plus minus by convention the current flows from positive to negative so here the current i flows in this direction right so this is plus minus so current always flows from a higher potential to a lower potential so this is plus minus so similarly here the current flows in this direction from top to bottom so this is plus and minus now we can follow one specific convention. So now as the current flows, so this is a closed part of the given circuit, right? So this is a closed part of the given circuit. So let us try to follow a convention where the current flowing from minus to plus. So whenever current flows from minus to plus of any given part of the circuit, there is a rise in potential, isn't it? There is a rise in potential. So let us take this as positive. So when current flows in a closed network from minus to plus, there is a rise in potential. So let us consider that to be positive. And when the current flows from plus to minus, there is a drop in potential. So let us consider that that is negative. So let us try to follow this convention. We can consider the opposite also. Where this is negative and this is positive, we will get the same answer. Right? So let us try to follow this convention. So how do I write KVL here? The algebraic sum, so when I consider the sum of voltages in this closed path, it is definitely equal to zero. So the voltage between these two terminals A and B is V volts. Let this be C and D. So what is the voltage between A and C? It is the current I into resistance R1. So similarly the voltage between the terminals C and D is the current I into resistance R2. Now what is the convention we are following? A rise is positive, a drop is negative, right? So here there is a rise from minus to plus. So this is plus V, right? Now current flows from this A to C, that is from plus to minus. So there is a drop in potential, so that is negative. So what is the voltage here? It is I into R1. I write a negative sign. I put a negative sign because there is a drop in potential. So similarly current flows from C to D where there is a drop in potential from plus to minus. So I write a minus sign I into R2 equal to 0. Right? So V equals I R1 plus I R2. Or if I want to calculate the current I it is V by R1 plus R2. Okay, so let us try to follow this convention. Right? So we can write the KVL 
KVL for any given circuit very easily if we consider this notation where the rise in potential is considered as positive or drop in potential is considered as negative. So let us take a few problems and see how we can solve. <clears throat> so this is the circuit given and we need to find the current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor. Given this is I1 and this is I2. So the current flowing in the first loop is I1 and the current flowing in the second loop is I2. So let us try to follow the same notation. So the, the current I1 is flowing in the clockwise direction. So there is a rise in potential. So here the current is flowing plus minus 2 plus. So there is a rise in potential. So it is 20 volts. Here the current is flowing in this direction. So this is plus minus. There is a drop in potential. Isn't it? So it is minus I1 into 10. So the voltage is current into resistance. Again there is a drop in potential. There is a voltage supply connected here plus 10 volts. So there is a drop in potential. So that is minus 10. Now here there is a 1 ohm resistor. So if we observe the 1 ohm resistor, current I1 flows in this direction from top to bottom whereas current I2 flows in this direction bottom to top. Now since we are in the first loop, so this is also known as mesh analysis, so we are operating in the first loop, so this is current flowing from plus to minus, right? And there is an op opposition of current flowing in the opposite direction I2. So the total flow of current would be I1 minus I2, isn't it? There is one current flowing from top to bottom, the other current is flowing from bottom to top, so it has to be I1 minus I2. So considering the first loop here, the current flows from B to C where there is a drop in potential. So that is minus current into 1 equal to 0. Right? So we have 20 equal to 20 minus 10 minus I1 into 10 minus I1 plus I2 equal to 0. So we get 10 equals, so this is 11 I1, I take it to RHS. So I have 11 I1 minus I2. So this is equation 1. So this is the equation what we get for the first loop. Now, considering the second loop here, so we write the equation with respect to current I2. Right? So current is flowing here from B to X, so there is a drop in potential. Current is flowing from X to Y, so again there is a drop in potential. And current flows from C to B within loop 2. Right? And there is an opposition of current I1 in the first loop. So what do we get? So here this is plus minus. Okay, there is a drop in potential, so minus 5 I2. Okay, so now there is an opposition of current, so it is I2 minus I1. So since I am writing the equation for the second loop, I always consider I2 first. So it is I2 minus I1 into 1. And of course I have a negative sign because it is plus minus, current is flowing from a higher to a lower potential, so minus. So there is a power supply, it is again plus minus, isn't it? So plus minus is, again, there is a drop in potential. So what do we get? We get minus 5 equal to 0.
right? So whenever there's a drop in potential, I have a minus sign. So I take this 5 to the other side. So I get 5 equals, so this is minus into minus plus I1 minus 6I2. So this is equation 2. Okay, so if we subtract equations 1 and 2, and we eliminate the common term, so I have 5 equals I1 minus 6 I2, so this is equation 2, right? So let us try to eliminate one of them. Let me multiply the second equation by 11, right? So what do I get? We get The first equation remains the same, so I get 55 minus equals 11i1 minus 66i2, right? So I have multiplied equation 2 by 11 so that I can eliminate i1. Right? So I subtract, so I eliminate i1. So what do we get? We get minus 45 equals 65 I2 or I2 equals minus 45 by 65 amperes or it is minus 9 by 30. Okay, so this is I2. So I want to know what is the current flowing through the resistor 5 ohms. The current flowing through the resistor 5 ohm is I2 which is minus 9 by 13 amperes. Now what does this minus sign indicate? The minus sign indicates that the current is flowing in the opposite direction. So the current across 5 ohms is flowing from Y to X and it is 9 by 13 amperes. Right? So let us take another problem. <clears throat> so the circuit is given here. There is a current source of 5 amperes. There are two resistors 5 ohm and 3 ohm. The voltage across 5 ohm is, five, is, is V1. The voltage across the 3 ohm is V2. We need to find the voltage across the source. So this is the input source, so I need to find what is the voltage Vs. It's a fairly simple problem. So the current flowing in the circuit is 5 amperes. So what is the voltage across 5 ohms? The voltage across 5 ohms will be the current I5 into 5 which is equal to 25 volts. The current flowing through 3 ohm is again 5. So the voltage V2 is going to be the current 5 into resistance 3 which is 15 volts. Right? So what is the total voltage? The voltage across 5 ampere source is nothing but the voltage drop across 5 plus the voltage drop across 3 ohms. So therefore Vs is going to be V1 plus V2 which is 25 plus 15 which is equal to 40 volts. <clears throat> so the circuit is given. We need to find the voltage V0. Right? So this is the first loop. This is the second loop. The current I1 and I2. So the current is flowing in the clockwise direction, so current flows in this direction, clockwise, so this is plus minus. Current always flows from a higher to a low potential, so this again is plus minus, this again is plus minus for the first loop. When I consider the second loop, the current is flowing in the clockwise direction which is I2, so current is flowing in the clockwise direction from the lower end to the higher end, so this is plus minus, the current is flowing in this direction, so plus minus and plus minus here. 
Okay, so let us write KVL equation for the first loop. So we again follow the same practice where a rise in potential is positive, a drop in potential is negative. So here it is minus plus, so there is a rise in potential, so I write plus 4, right? There is a drop in potential here across the 2 ohm resistor. So the voltage is I1 into 2 minus because there is a drop. Again, the voltage poten the potential across 3 ohms is I1 into 3, a minus sign because there is a drop. Here it is minus plus, there is a rise in potential, so it is plus 9. So again here, there is a drop in potential, isn't it? So I1 is flowing from top to bottom, so let me call this as A and B. So I1 is flowing from A to B. Whereas I2 is flowing from B to A. So the current across 4 ohm would be I1 minus I2. Right? So the potential is I1 minus I2 current into the resistance 4 with a minus sign. Right? So since we are writing the equation for the first loop, we consider it with respect to current I1. So this is plus minus. So I have a negative sign here. So again, this is plus minus, so there is a drop in potential, so it is minus 5 equal to 0, right? So this is plus 4 plus 9 minus 5, so we get 8, so then I have minus 2 I1, minus 3 I1, minus 4 I1, so this is 5 plus 4 which is minus 9i1 plus 4i2 equal to 0. So we get 9i1. So let me take these two to RHS, isn't it? So 9i1 minus 4i2 is equal to 8. So this is equation 1. So similarly writing the KVL for the second loop. So again here, current I2 is flowing in the clockwise direction, so this is minus plus, there is a rise in potential, so I have plus 5. Since we are writing the equation with respect to the second loop, so the current flowing through 4 ohms would be I2 minus I1 into 4 with a minus sign. Why, is it, why do I have a minus sign? Because we are writing with respect to the polarity is minus plus, current is flowing from B to A with respect to the second loop. Again here current is flowing from plus to minus, so it is minus I2 into 1 and again minus I2 into 5 equal to 0. So we get 5 volts minus, so this is minus 4 minus 1, minus 5, so we get minus 10 I2 plus 4 I1 equal to 0. Taking these two to RHS, we get minus 4 I1 plus 10 I2 equal to 5. Right? So this is equation 2. So now we have minus 4 I1 plus 10 I2 equal to 5. This is equation 2. Right? So now we need to eliminate one of the variables either I1 or I2 so that we can get or calculate the current I2. Right? So now what do we do? It's very easy. We have to eliminate one of them. Right? So one easy way is to multiply this by 4 and to multiply this by 9. So when I multiply the first equation by 4, I get 36 I1 minus 16 I2. Right? Equals 32 so I am multiplying all of them by 4. 
and then with, with 9, so I get minus 36 I1 plus 90 I2 equals 45. So 985 is 45. I just add these two, so I1 gets cancelled. So you get 77 equals 74 I2. Right? So what is I2? I2 equals 77 by 74 amperes. So now I need to calculate the voltage across 5 ohms. So the current flowing through 5 ohms is I2 which is 77 by 74. So the voltage V0 is nothing but current I2 into 5 which is 77 by 74 into 5 volts. Right? So of course you can calculate the value and find out how much this is. So one most important thing which we need to remember is when we write the KVN, we need to follow one of these standard rules. Either rise in potential is positive. If rise in potential is positive, then drop in potential is taken as negative. So if the KVN equation is written correctly, then we can definitely solve the equations and we, we can either calculate the current or voltage or power as mentioned in the problem.